On fast aeroplanes, shock waves form on the wings when the local airflow reaches the speed of sound, known as Mach 1. The formation of these shock waves causes energy loss for the aeroplane, which requires additional thrust to compensate for the increased drag. Swept wings help aeroplanes delay the onset of the shock waves to a higher airspeed, and this is how it works. Let's compare straight and swept wings side by side. When the wing is swept back, the airflow encounters it at an angle. This airflow can be divided into two vectors, one perpendicular to the wing and one parallel to the wing. The parallel vector has no effect, while the perpendicular vector is shorter, therefore slower. The swept wing experiences slower local airflow and lower pressure compared to the straight wing. If it's challenging to visualise this concept, consider an infinitely long straight wing meeting the airflow perpendicularly. When the wing slides sideways, the resulting angled airflow takes a longer path from the front to the back. The air pressure is distributed over a longer distance Thus, it is reduced at any given point. And this is how the swept wing experiences slower local airflow, which is perpendicular to its leading edge. Slower local airflow on swept wings means that this aeroplane can fly faster than the aeroplane with straight wings before the shock waves form and their negative impact takes effect. Another swept wing theory focuses on the wing's shape. When the local airflow reaches Mach 1, the shock waves form on the largest continually curved surface. Sweeping the wing back reduces the curvature of the wing, as seen from the airflow, causing the local airflow to follow a gentler path while reducing the formation of the shock waves. There is a downside to swept wing design, however. Since the local airflow experienced by the swept wings is slower, then the lift generated by the wings is lower. This becomes problematic during slow flight phases, such as takeoff and landing.